I like to start on time for the people that are here. Hey, everybody, it's the Blathering Live. Kidnap Suck here on a Thursday night. Uh, the ongoing saga of what night ends up being the regular broadcast, I, I, I think it ends with Thursday. Unless I get booked on a comedy show, then we're screwed. Then we're all screwed. Uh, I know a lot of you are wondering. I, I'm also thinking of, I just, I just might do this four nights a week, five nights a week, go live in an hour, five my time, uh, and then just do it. You know, and then YouTube will reward you. That's what they say. They say consistency and YouTube will make you a millionaire. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, we already have people checking in, and I, I love the early. I love the early risers. Uh, Chris Kiefer uh, put a comment here at three o'clock today, two hours before the live stream, and I bet he's not even here. He's not even here to see uh, my pink beanie turn into a red Steve Zizou beanie. Uh, that my lighting, what I re I almost refuse to fix, creates. It looks like I have. Uh, uh, someone hit golf balls off my eyes and took out divots. Uh, I'm not that tired. Uh, and uh, Brenna Mars here uh, and Jeff Mays here, who called into the show last week, swinging through here. Look for uh, Jeff and I to dance soon. I think next month we've got something hooked up uh, uh, for a uh, fun uh, live stream on his end of things. I'll let Jeff announce the details, all right? I'll let Jeff announce the details. I have a feeling um, that when I uh, more people come in, I'm going to have to re-announce the drink tonight. No, it's not the Bacardi, the Dragonberry Bacardi. I ran out of it. I might have a problem. Not with alcohol, but with Dragonberry flavored alcohol. I'm uh, drinking 16 years Zaya rum. Uh, I think my friend Jen Mur. I think that was, a, that was a thing. I think my friend Jen Murrow got this for me at a birthday party. One of my more successful friends, I, I, I think it's Jen, but one of my more successful friends, I think, got this for me at a birthday party a couple years ago. And that's that's what we're going to ruin tonight with some uh, generic Target Cola. Joey Beans is here, one of my longtime uh, friends here on the Internet. Joey Beans says, why do wives have to announce their poops? That's what a normal marriage. Joey, that's not normal. That does not happen in my house. I don't know. I've never known a house in which that happens. So I think there's a problem in, in what's going on with you. Uh, Chris Kiefer is here uh, watching live in chat. Uh, Chris, I want to know what um, what made you leave a comment two hours early, which is not a bad thing. Uh, just where is the excitement for tonight's broadcast? Excitement for life? I don't know. I don't know. You can call into the show and that's going to happen here. This is like an AM radio show for a modern age. What does that mean? I don't know. But it's here. We're having fun. And, yeah, you can call into the show by becoming a YouTube channel member. Now, we do broadcast live on Facebook and on Twitch. And I do have Twitch sub uh, subs still. Uh, but the Twitch channel has been dormant for so long that I'm just having fun broadcasting over there. I'd love if you're watching on Twitch and you want to give me a sub. Uh, but we're going to figure out how to properly and safely get you the link to call in because I do want to reward anyone who's on Twitch. Uh, and uh, patrons, uh, patron supporters uh, at patreon.com slash catnapsock. You get a link. You get a link, you get a link, you get a link. And you call in. It's audio only for those who uh, need to be reminded. that You don't have to put up on makeup. Mmm. Good old-fashioned rum and coke here at the house. That's what I love. That is what I love. Comments pouring in here. Uh, Laser Bolt here. Brennan's watching on two spots. Uh, Chris Kiefer answers, excitement for Ken. I was on my break and bumming around YouTube. Uh, and Jeff May says, things I need to do with Ken. Let's read this. Uh, Alejandro is the first to comment on Facebook. Yes, you are. What a sexy name. Alejandro Vea Luna. That's a sexy name. JMB's here. Lauren Romo says, hello there. Jeff May says this. And if you aren't subscribed to Jeff May, stop what you're doing. Give me a like. I'm begging for likes. Uh, go ahead and also subscribe to Jeff May here on YouTube. He has great content. He's one of the best out there. He says, things I need to do with Ken. One, get him back on Mint on Card soon. Do a card break together. Schedule guest appearance on exclamation point uh this is it i can't wait to come back to mint on card i had a lot of fun in boston two great shows out there did some things i've done before did some bits i messed up one of my oldest bits uh the the the, the rockwell audience saw me mess up one of my it's literally a line i've built up a bigger bit around the line but it was a line i wrote about 2006 or 7 and used to do weekly at room five 
And I just flubbed it. I just flubbed it. It was funny. It was kind of funny in its own way. The oldest one. So I'm excited to get back up. Uh, and I have, um, I don't want to say a new approach. I just, I just did some things that I've never done on a stand-up stage at the Rockwell Theater. Uh, and, and, and Laugh Boston. But at the Rockwell Theater show Saturday night. Uh, great crowd. On a kind of cold, windy, rainy night in Boston. We're in Somerville, right outside Boston. Um, it's all kind of, I've learned, it's all like, it's Boston. It's like L.A. You Burbank, Studio City. You're in L.A. The, you, you, you know the differences when you live there. But from afar, it's all one thing. We had a great show. But I did some, I, I had a, a thing I've been wanting to do on stage. And I finally did it. It only took me a year. I literally wrote it, I had it on a piece of paper a year ago that I'd put it's something I had I had in my back pocket and on one of my clips that I have a, I don't put a lot of stand up clips out there because I don't do a lot of crowd work and I'm not a you know full on misogynist and trying to get a Netflix special uh, but uh, I had a a set I had a great set but in the back of my the back of my pants you see this white piece of paper coming out my butt well my pocket and that was a sign of my cowardice because I didn't do the thing I wanted to do. I got afraid. And sometimes as a comic, you might find yourself getting afraid on stage, wanting to do something new. And I cowered away for a year. And I did it rock well. And it was the best part of the, of the set killed, killed. Uh, Jeff May says it's a horse city. So it's all the same. Yeah. Uh, those streets are an interesting thing out there. Uh, they are definitely built for horses, and it was uh, we rented a car. Ellis did the driving because I don't think I was legally allowed to drive the car. And I want to give Ellis, that's Mark, all the credit for driving around Boston because it was scary. We took a, a a ride share, got a ride share car to Laugh Boston. We landed at Logan, pretty easy travel. No, not even a delay. The captain of the plane. Thought it was going to be delayed. Wasn't. It made great time. Uh, we ran all the way to our hotel room and then had to go back to Laugh Boston, which is essentially next door to the airport. Our Uber driver um, got lost four times. He's a local. He got lost four times. Kind of how crazy it is to drive over there. Uh, anyway, so yeah, Jeff, let's do it. I'm excited to uh, work with you uh, on some shows. Let's break some packs together. And uh, let's uh, do uh, Mint on Card. I think I'm funny again. Took me a while. Took me a while. Sometimes you don't feel funny. There's a lot to talk about in the world. Um, Jeff May says he's currently watching Sox Orioles in the background, so I'm having a Boston heavy moment. I'm checking my fantasy baseball while we're here on the stream. If you listened on the podcast later, thank God. I'm so glad someone still listens to my podcast feed. Used to have good numbers on the podcast feed. We're talking in 2014. Don't have the great numbers anymore. And I understand why. I understand what I've done to your trust as me as a podcaster. Uh, but uh, I, 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 it's still there, and I'm happy. But if you're on the podcast feed, I am also checking my fantasy baseball scores live. It's not, we got a great team that's not doing well. And that's we know it's not going to end up that way. Mets winning 16-4 to over Atlanta helped us today. We've had some pitching woes. We've had some pitching woes. So there you go. All right. Uh, also... Um, I I had a moment, too. The Orioles have called up their top prospect, one of the top prospects in all of baseball, and he's like 20 years old. His name's Jackson Holiday. His father is three, almost four years, let's be honest, four years younger than me, Matt Holiday, former MLB player. Jackson Holiday is like an infielder. He's a left-hand hitter. Uh, his dad was an outfielder from the right side. And uh, was a good player. Good player. Jackson looks better. and uh, But I'm having one of those moments where he's 20, he looks 12, and I don't know if I can watch baseball anymore. I don't, I don't know. JMB is watching from uh, Japan, right, JMB? And says uh, he just got the updated news of the United States news from my screenshot. Yes, I have the screenshot up, and... Um, the big story today, we're going to talk about it more on Anytime with Ken and Alden tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, 11 uh, Pacific on uh, the Anytime YouTube channel. O.J. Simpson died today, 76 of cancer. And uh, a lot of wonderful jokes today. A lot of wonderful jokes on the internet about it. You know? Yeah, God bless y'all. You, you took your shots. 
you made them and the solid jokes. And uh, I have no uh, nuanced take on the death of O.J. Simpson other than finally. Um, uh, but I do understand, you know, he had family around him, he had grandkids. And that's, you know, th that's an interesting thing uh, <laughs> to say lightly to grow up with. If your grandfather is O.J., at what, what, what point do you find all that out? And have you already found that out? And, and how do you reconcile that stuff? Not for me to have to figure out. Not for me to have to figure out. But uh, that was a thing. But, but the, the O.J. death is, uh, is it's interesting in, in, in the sense of, of what that uh, trial, the heinous murders that he committed... Uh, all that, that era was a big signpost for me on the path forward in adulthood. And it's weird seeing he's dead. Plus I was a you know, sports fan and he was a, he was a great announcer. He was a well-known, well-liked personality. So it was one of the first times that I had to face the truth about someone that I had, I wouldn't say looked up to him, but was like a fan. I loved the Naked Gun movies, for example. And he was, he was great in those, right? And it was like, oh, cool. And that was for me at this like, 18, 19, 20 year range, age range, where you had to like face the fact like, oh, I've never, I had never dealt with that before. You know, every generation does where you're like a, a naive kid and suddenly you're like, oh, that, you know, that person I respected uh, is a murderer or has done something heinous. And that was uh, a lot of it tied into uh, him. But we're going to talk about it more detail on any time. For those just joining you, this is The Blathering Live. I do this weekly, and we might do this more. I think we're just going to do this more. I think so. If you want to support the show, you can uh, go to streamelements.com slash catnap slash tip. Uh, I'm putting that up there uh, a little bit more than I used to because I'm finding that these videos, uh, once they are, are done being live, they go uh, to the YouTube AI gods, and they demonetize a lot of them. It uh, happens a lot with live streams. I'm trying not to swear, at least up top. I'm trying not to say things, uh, buzzwords that might get uh, the AI bots on YouTube upset. But I'm discovering that these are becoming increasingly more demonetized and you have to kind of fight uh, against them. Um, so uh, if you want to support the show in other ways, uh, you can uh, directly support at streamelements.com slash catnapsuck slash tip. I've got the uh, activity uh, feed up, so if you leave a comment on there, I might be able to see it. But you also could super chat and ask me questions and do it here. That is a great way as well. As I've always said, this is a Q&A show at its heart. So if you have a question for me, I'll answer it. Uh, but if uh, you have a question that you don't want me to at least ignore, I will not necessarily provide the answer. But... If you super chat it, I will acknowledge it there. All right. Uh, there you go. There you go. The calls are going to come in now. We got our first call of the night. I want to get to it. Um, but first, we got this super chat here. Look at this. Laserbolt. I almost accidentally deleted the comment. I'm drunk already. Laserbolt says, I'm turning 57 on Sunday. It's also the day that Lincoln was shot in the Titanic sink. You have a B-Day coming up, Ken. What's, what interesting events or celebrities share your birthday? Uh, I'll tell you this, Laserbolt, and, and, and a happy early birthday to you. Laserbolt is a sweet soul. I suggest you go to his YouTube channel if you want some relaxing uh, drone footage. He does these flight simulator videos that are really relaxing. And, and, and I keep he, he's invited me to try to get on there and fly myself, but I just I haven't figured it out yet. But I think I'd like to do that as I've I, you know, I don't want to become a pilot because I'm a chicken shit. But uh, I think I maybe could finally become a computer pilot. Anyways, let's well, thank you. Uh, yeah, my birthday is April 19th. And, you know, like there's people there's a lot of people I've looked up to over the years who have birthdays around that Conan O'Brien's April 18th. David Letterman, I think, is April 12th. Liz Fair is April 17th. Don Mattingly, I believe, is uh, April 20th. Frank Viola, New York pitcher, uh, New York Met and Minnesota Twin pitcher, uh, I think is April 19th, same as mine. Uh, but also uh, 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 420 is uh, Hitler's birthday. Uh, so there you go. It's just been demonetized. Uh, and Hitler's last public appearance was on his birthday uh, in uh, April 20th. Uh, 1945, and then 10 days later, he died. Allegedly, and the reason I say allegedly is because that's currently a project I'm working on for another job. He died. He died that day. 
But uh, the fascinating stories around it are something I've been researching and writing the last couple of weeks for a job I have. So anyways, um, there's that. The two, though, um, uh, that uh, I, I, we'll get to a call here soon. Our first call of the night is coming in shortly. But Laser Bolt, uh, the two things that my birthday um, share ev- like anniversaries with are Waco and the Oklahoma City bombing. Now, Waco happened over a period of time, but I do believe the uh, burning, the actual burning of the compound happened on April 19th. Yes, April 19th, 1993. I was a junior in high school. And I remember it well. And two years later was, of course, uh, the Oklahoma... Uh, uh, bombing um, with the the absolute uh, heinous uh, nut job with Tim, Timmy McVeigh doing that, uh, who, by the way, uh, awash in conspiracy theories. He was one of those. Uh, so tell me again why uh, you know conspiracy theories are just fun, quaint little things we could explore. They are potentially dangerous things. Uh, and uh, yeah, April 19th, 1995. I was starting my radio career around that time and also was uh, in college. So there you go. Thank you for Super Chat, Laser Bolt. Do you have something weird out there, all of you? Call in. That's a great call-in topic. You want to call in tonight, get that link either on my Discord or the Patreon page or here on YouTube at the channel, a member-only post. Uh, Call in and tell me what your weirdest uh, birthday, the thing your birthday shares, uh, an anniversary, an event, a date that is that is that is uh, infamous, right? Uh, tell me, or just hey, I share a birthday with, you know, Hitler. Uh, do that there. Another super chat coming in from our buddy uh, BC, the Grind Calls. Subscribe to the Grind Calls as well. Naps up, good brothers. Want to drop in and say happy early birthday, many returns of the day. Thank you, thank you. I, I no plans to get out. Your way anytime soon, BC, but we'll have to meet in Vegas soon enough. All right. I've delayed. This poor gentleman has been waiting here. I've got to apologize. He is a uh, um, a, a regular caller, a regular contributor to this show and also Pop Rock and Radio, which, we, which will be back this Saturday night. Uh, 8984M is here, so something weird this week. The whole song went out. Oh, we could talk about that, too. But I'm going to take our first call tonight. Brennan uh, Mystical Mar is here. Brennan, how are you doing, my friend? Welcome to the show. What do you got today? Hello, Ken. Happy uh, week until your birthday. Thank you. We're going to have a birthday show um, next week on Thursday. So, Brennan, I hope you're here for that. You were asking about weird things that happen on birthdays. Yeah. What do you got? Well, okay. The day I was born is the day that a man named Klinghoffer was killed by Somali pirates who had hijacked a cruise ship. Okay. Oh, my God. They even made an opera about it. (laughs) That is... uh... There's an opera about it that somebody wrote, which I thought was... Uh, Leon Klinghoffer. I've not heard this story. He was uh, close friends with Jack Kirby. Hold on yeah. here. I'm, I'm going to... Sh- uh, well, I, you know what? I can't share this tab, tab quite yet because you're on the call mm-hmm. and I have not added calls to the to the media share tab. I'll fix that mm-hmm. before next week. I'm reading it now. Yeah. Hijacked, shot 1985. So... October that, 8, I believe that's my birthday. Yeah. Yeah. You're exactly right. Uh, this oddly enough, I didn't want to give up your birth date, uh, Brandon. I don't know if you're, you know, hiding your age from, uh, you know, anyone, but, uh, well, don't worry, I'm not Ron Swanson. Beautiful. I'm not trying to live off the grid. Um, now, <laughs> but on a, on a happier note, mm-hmm. so I wanted to ask, you know, I'm a pretty emotional guy. Emotional. I, okay. I cry a lot at movies. Fair. Fair. But I don't cry at sad things. Okay. Why? I cry at happy, uplifting things. Okay. So I guess my question for you is, what is a movie that you've seen that that you had a very emotional reaction to in the sense that you cried out of happiness and not out of sadness? 
Yeah, yeah. There's two moments that are recent that come to mind. Now, we talked on a lot on last week's episode. Actually, based on your call, we talked a lot about the Barbie movie. I rewatched the Barbie movie on my flight back from Boston. And there is a moment. I don't want to get too spoilery on the off chance someone hasn't seen it and they still want to see it. I, I, I love think the film. I know what moment you're talking about. But for, okay. well, for me, and I mentioned this maybe on Force Center, but like I, the earliest moment she when Barbie gets to the real world, and this yeah. is the post arrest on the Venice Beach, whatever, and yeah. um, she's released, and she's sitting on that bus bench, and kind of when you realize the movie is. Is, is a movie that's going to have some ruminations about what life is. The pains, the sufferings, the sadnesses, the joys. And she's sitting there with that old lady on the bench and says, you're beautiful. And the woman's like, I you know. know. I, I yeah. I cannot watch that moment without bawling. So, yeah. It there's is something, such a beautiful moment. It's a beautiful moment, Brennan. And when I saw it the first time in the theater, uh, no popcorn bucket was purchased by me, but I saw it in the theater, I, I, mm -hmm. I started crying really hard at that moment. But I was, and I'm not afraid, clearly not afraid to cry. I've cried on air many times in my career. But I, I was like surprised that, that got me, and that kind of set the tone for me the rest of the movie. Then I saw it on the plane, and I started to, it, it hit me again. It hit me again. And I get, do I want to be seen crying on a plane? I have no problem with it. I just don't want to upset anyone else around me who thinks something weird's about to happen. But I, I held it back and my eyes got watery and I finished the rest of the movie. And I was, you know, maybe not as emotionally engaged with the rest of the movie as it was the first time I saw it because that's naturally going to happen. So that's one moment. And you said you connected to that moment too. And I consider that a happy moment, even though there's sadness involved in it. Yes. Oh, I mean... It's, I sort of dragged my family with me to see the movie. Okay. And I don't think they, their expectations were that high. I mean, I had heard, because I'm invested in the movie world. Movie so space. I heard some of the, the early reviews, and we all, my mom and my dad and me, we talk about that scene a lot. Yes, yeah. all three of us had the same reaction. Yeah, no, I'm with you. And and one of the other moments, and 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 this might uh, spark debate because I'm outside the force center walls, which I were a think safe. I know what you're going to say. Yeah, safe war moment. But uh, there's a lot of moments in Rise of Skywalker that get me yes. emotional as a longtime Star yes. Wars fan. But the one, and and again, the more you watch these things, the 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 effect is lessened, and and you're not, you know, I'm not bawling every time I see any of these movies. I, though to be fair, I haven't watched Mr. Holland's Opus in about 15 years, and I cry at the end of that mm. movie when oh, when yeah. they play Mr. Holland's Opus, I I blubber yes. like like a child. But yeah, it's yes, that indeed. moment. It's that moment when when the dropship gets onto the uh, the the uh, final order uh, cruiser. Uh, Richard E. Grant's characters like you know jam their speeders and 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 uh, what well, excuse me. There's that moment that sets it up. I, I got it wrong. It's a moment later on with, with the admiral uh, when everything's coming out of hyperspace and we've had this great moment with with Lando Calrissian saying there's more of us Poe. There's more of us Poe. And, and and the the final order uh, admiral says to Richard E. Grant, it, it's it's not a, a a navy, sir. It's people, and and that is it has continues to hit me, especially as I uh, became more politically engaged over over time, uh, yeah. and realized yeah. that it is it is truly about uh, the, the people, um, and, and it's truly about um, you know all these people in the galaxy and the story coming together for uh this cause and 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 that got me and that that connects to a lot of real world things for me well, well i'll tell you an interesting story about that so the movie ends right just go for ends and my friend who was with me turns to me and he says what do you think and i'm like give me a minute because i was sobbing same and i always said i always had to clarify on mine And say I was crying with joy. Yeah, <laughs> but other people cried for other reasons. Yeah, and, and and I don't I don't need the movie to engage with any but everybody. It, like yeah, to be completely honest, it is the greatest movie theater experience I have ever had in my entire life. Well, there you go, there you go. You can't take that away. Jeff Good May enough. says Jeff May says I ball at the end of oh. Warrior. 
Um, you know, Warrior, Warrior, which one is Warrior is, uh, oh, that's the 2011. Oh, yeah, that's with Owen Lars. Yes. Nick Nolte and, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good picture. Yeah, Jennifer Morrison, uh, yeah, Nick Nolte, Joel, Joel Edgerton, Tom Hardy. I enjoy that picture. Uh, I, Jeff May, I could see you crying at the end of that one there. Uh, that's 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 good. Well, Brennan, uh, you've got to start it on a great conversation. So if anyone out there uh, wants to call in uh, and share the moments that have got you in a movie theater the most or the, you know, I'll add, what are your most um, uh, public uh, 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 displays of crying? I do want to hear, good or bad. Uh, but uh, that, plus we're asking you're out there tonight if you want to call in. And share the story of, uh, you know, what do you share your birthday with? A uh, horrible event, a uh, good event, or a birthday of someone else? Brennan, thank you so much for thank calling again. in again today. Right. Thank you. You got it. All right, Brennan Mars is there. He's uh, such a, a wonderful, warm human being. Love chatting with Brennan. Uh, he's got some great uh, – he, gra- he He's got some great song requests for pop, rock, and radio, but I, I call them requests of the people, where sometimes I might like playing some weird alternative songs and B-sides from 1996, and Brennan will be like, can I hear a fun Journey song so we all can enjoy life again? And I appreciate Brennan's presence there. Uh, we got people like Brian Tiller in chat. Trey T. Laserbolt is here, as we said. Uh, he says, happy stuff makes him ball as well. You want to call into the show? There are some ways to do it. YouTube channel. Channel members and Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash catnapsock. Get the links. There's a private post uh, in uh, on my YouTube page if you're a channel member. Or you can go to Patreon where I post it uh, before the show or in the Discord. Brendan uh, Casey, who's watching on Facebook, says, Rogue One got me really good, especially the scene between Bale and my Mothman when she asked Bale about his friend of the Jedi. Yeah, that uh, Rogue One... Um, had a lot of little moments like that. I think that I think that movie's only going to continue to grow in its emotional uh, impact uh, w- once Andor season two completes and, and takes us right up to that moment. It's good, yeah. And, and, and obviously, I'm a Star Wars fan. I mean, how many live streams are done with a plush Wampa at the side of the host? Um, but Star Wars doesn't always get me emotional. It's just a world I love to explore and play in and take lessons from. But I think as I got older and as I started to study Star Wars on a level uh, that I had not previously done, where I was connecting to the themes and the p- politics of it and the lessons of those politics and just the souls in there, being part of the fight, being uh, going towards the light because the light is there, uh, I-, I think I connected it more into the real one. That, that Rise of Skywalker moment of it, it's not a, a Navy cert, it's people Man, moves me uh, so much there. So I love that film. Uh, is it perfect? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But I'd rather focus on what moves me than worry about what didn't. Uh, and that's where I sit with that. So uh, there we go. This is the uh, this is what Brennan was talking about. I had not really heard about this guy, Leon Klinghoffer. Uh, uh, killed in 1985 in a pirate hijacking. Uh, Palestin- Palestinian Liberation Front. Well, it's timely. <laughs> uh, the complicated world we live in. Uh, that's fascinating. I'm going to see. And now this is my how I love history. I'm going to uh, absolutely pay a little more attention to that. I'm going to uh, what, what I'll do tonight is dig in um, to the story of Mr. Leon Klinghoffer there. So if you want to call in, please, uh, phone lines are open. Get in here. Trey T, get in here. Brian Tiller, get in here. Laser Bolt, get in here. Get in the Discord. Uh, get onto that post. Get on the Patreon page. Find out how to call in because I want to hear. I want to hear. Um, there is sharing your birthday. It's so weird. Birthdays are obviously pretty random unless, you know, it was planned by your folks. Then I guess it's not random, um, but it's random to you. And that day takes on obviously special meaning because it's the day you were born. And maybe you got to celebrate it. Not everyone got to celebrate it. Not everyone does celebrate their birthdays. Totally get that. I have years where I'm down. My birthday's next week. We're going to do a stream, a birthday stream here next Thursday. Uh, that's going to be what we're going to do, a uh, big birthday stream. Uh, but uh, other than that this year, probably not doing it much. Probably not doing much. A lot of times I, I fire up the uh, fire pit in the backyard and we bring a bunch of people over. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's what we're doing these days. I don't know. Um, but I, I, I love the – I'm obsessed with the idea that your day becomes your day. And then when you hear it, 
Like, I had a comic friend of mine who shared the exact birthday down to the year. I had another guy I was working with, a screen junkie, shared my birthday, probably shorter, uh, about 10 years. But the, the most weirdest one when, was when uh, I was watching Mad About You, Paul Reiser's character. I believe his name, Paul, right? Um, it, it, I, 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 there was something about the character I, I gravitated to. I wasn't like a huge Mad About You fan. But I'd watch it because that, that's what we did back in the old days, kids. You'd watch sitcoms even if you weren't fans because that's kind of all you had to do. Or I could fire up the PC or fire up maybe the Commodore 64 in the earlier days uh, watching Cheers. Um, and uh, Paul Reiser's character went on this little comic monologue about how his birthday was April 19th and that wasn't a special day. No one has a birthday on April 19th. Um, but it's his day. And I just was so happy. It was, it was, it was absolutely happy. It was like my, I've been recognized by TV. It's weird. Brian Taylor just celebrated his birthday. Just turned 52 years old. 52, chief. But at 51, Brian Taylor did something a lot of people haven't done. He released a music album. He released two, two EPs with the Moon Agers. And don't worry, the Moon Agers are not done. We're cooking up some new stuff. I had a little emotional stinging uh, after our radio appearance. A lot of people know that story. Uh, I recoiled, uh, recoiled, recoiled from music. And it's not that um, something I created or had part of uh, creating. It's not that uh, it was rejected and I need the opinions or praise of other people. It was an embarrassing, hurtful moment in my career. And I just, I just... It was beyond just someone not liking your stuff. I'm a comic. People don't like things you do almost every 30 seconds, right? Like, if you're on stage and you have eight minutes, even on a good set, you got six of eight minutes. Um, but there's about two minutes of that set where people aren't laughing. It happens all the time. I'm used to it. Uh, but there was something a little extra emotional. So I recoiled not only from writing songs with the Moon Agers, Brian and Sean, uh, but uh, from music itself. That's one of the reasons you have not had a pop rock and radio episode out. I just didn't, I haven't listened to music in about two months. But we're back Saturday night, going to do an hour of power music. But happy belated birthday to Brian Tiller, 52, uh, 52. It looks good on Brian. I've been in public with Brian. I wouldn't think 52. I actually absolutely wouldn't think. You know, he's got a hip, cool demeanor about him. Plus, he plays Fortnite. You, that's me. That makes you inherently cool, right? Dear God, dear God, right? Uh, we are taking uh, comments on uh, things that make you cry. Movies. Lauren Romo says I get misty eyed at the end of Rudy. Don't judge me. I don't think anyone's going to judge judge you for Rudy, Lauren. I think that is a movie that a lot of people. I mean, uh, I know Mark Ellis will, uh, you know, back up the claim that uh, he, in fact. Uh, would cry, Rudy. So I, th I don't think you're alone there. Uh, JMB says I cry at Spock and Bormir's deaths. Uh, Bormir's, yeah, Bormir's gets me. But there's something about Bormir's death, spoiler, to a 20 plus year old movie and a, what, 60 plus year old book. Bormir's death, as depicted on screen, um, it's, it's this oddly noble death. And I don't want to become one of those people that's obsessed with noble deaths. Go out on your shield, all this stuff. But the concept is nice. It's a little athletic as well, too. Go out on your shield. Uh, but he, he goes out, dare I say, I don't, want, I don't use this term lightly, like a boss. Uh, and I think there's something. So I, I, I think I have a different emotional reaction to that. Uh, even though I'm a casual Star Trek fan, I do recall the death of Spock made me very sad. But then I was confused because suddenly he was alive and he was a kid again, and I didn't understand the details of that plot. Um, but I thought, well, I don't, I don't think that's what happens. But um, his death got me there. So, you know, I think you're, you're good there. Oh, you know, one of the other moments, if we're talking about deaths in stories or movies, it got me in the book, and therefore I was predisposed to, to having it get me in the movie. And that is uh, the character Rue in Hunger Games, uh, portrayed in the film by Amanda Stenberg, whose upcoming uh, 
spin in Star Wars, The Acolyte, comes very soon. Um, that, uh, yeah, that, uh, that death just, there's something about it. Just gets me. And yes, I read the Hunger, Hunger Games books. It was, a, it was a, the Hunger Games books, and I don't have any shame in that. I don't think anyone should have any shame in them. I think they're good books. And are they based off of the, with the, the, you know, the other story, Battle, Death, or whatever? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, uh, um, it was right at the explosion of nerd pop culture. And um, those, it, it was Harloff. Uh, Harloff, Christian Harloff, uh, who's an avid book reader. You wouldn't, I don't, you wouldn't think it. I don't know why you wouldn't think it. That sounds like an insult to him, but I just don't think he doesn't have a book club show, you know, type of thing. But like, he's an avid book reader. And especially back then. And he, he said, you got to read these books. You got to read these books. And so I did. And I, I tore through the first two Hunger Games books. Um, and the other one I liked as well, but I just like, I went through those as fast as I could. I liked it. So there you go. Um, JMB says, Brian looks like a slender Walter White in his profile picture. That's, that's accurate. Brian Tiller says, recent birthday boy, I'm a sap and will cry for movies like Miracle, Secretariat, and McFarlane. It sounds like you cry at horses and sports movies, Brian. The sports stuff can get it. There is a... <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, Troy's here. Um, I love Battle Royale. That's it. Battle Royale. That's the one. Bought the pair on DVD back then when you had to import them. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the one that everyone loved. Uh, you don't have a book face. It's a great compliment. Yeah, I guess that's that's true. I guess that's true. Uh, <laughs> Troy, I bet I uh, hung out with Troy again. Uh, uh, I, I almost said met, but I, we we have met before. But I, I asked Troy. I said you got to remind me. And he walks up. He walks up and he hands me some cards. I have them over here. So he hands me a pack of trading cards. In my head, I'm like, oh, this is Troy, right? This is Troy. But I just kind of played it cool because I don't want to be like Troy and him be like Bob. Uh, then he then he's like, hey, by the way, it's you know, it's me, Troy. And I was like, well, yeah, yeah, I I knew that. Um, but uh, Troy Ken Bull shows uh, great time. Uh, he's a, he's a local to the area, so thank you for those gifts, uh, Troy. We're gonna put those up. We're gonna put those up uh, soon on the channel. I got to get back to it. Um, and Troy says Ken is the man who wrote stars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the guy uh, at uh, one of the clubs uh, said, hey, what do you want for your intro? He wasn't the host of the show. He was like the, the sound guy. So he did like a voice of God thing. And I said, oh, you, you can say uh, I'm the author of the book, Why We Love Star Wars. And he's like, great. So then he brought me up. He goes, here is the author of Why We Love Stars, Ken Napsack. And you know what? Maybe I wrote a book about stars and why we love them. Um. There we go. Uh, Jeff May says, I had a girl turn me down because I look like I don't read. But here's the thing. I kind of agree with that. Uh, you know, in, I met you, Jeff, at a, at a nerd-themed bar for Jed Murrow's birthday. And, you know, you're a Golden Spikes-level amateur boxer champion from the past. You're a tall, strapping lad. I, I just wouldn't assume you have time to read the books. I would assume you're out and about in the street, getting your business done, breaking hearts, hosting shows. That's what I would think. I wouldn't think that it was, uh, you know, that you weren't into reading or that you couldn't read. I don't. I don't look like a book reader, too. Maybe now, but as a kid, I was. I was a very uh, a passionate reader as a kid. Not a good one. I actually I topped out early. I tapped out. Or, uh, uh, I was a like a second grader who read at like a sixth or seventh grade level, right? I don't know how they determined that, but that was like the word on the street. That's what my parents were told. I think I stopped there. I think I got there early, and I peaked, and that's where I've just gotten dumber. I got to write that down. I might make that a stand-up bit. Jeff, don't steal it. Uh, Ranger Donald's here and says, uh, I cry at the Power Rangers movie. I'm not ashamed during Zordon's death, but it's how the team reacts. It reminds me how much the team meant to me growing up. Well, there you go. I think that's a good, that's a good one. I'm not super familiar with the Power Rangers movie. I obviously understand who they are and what they are, but I just didn't engage with them a lot. Um, you know, um, but I love that. It's about the meanings behind it all. 
It is about the meanings behind it all and, and the emotions and all those lessons, and they can get into your heart and soul. Uh, all right. Taking a big sip. Mm. Let's get on with it here. Um, I'll check back in on the fantasy team. The fantasy, there's not a lot of Major League Baseball ter- players playing tonight. There's not a lot of games. Let me double check. Pirates and Phillies. That's I have three Pirates. O'Neill Cruz, Brian Reynolds, and Hunter Davis. Collectively, they're three for ten tonight. That's a 300 average. That's great. Okay. Not a lot of stats tonight. Not going to be one of those big stats nights. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, there you go. I, what do we think about this? The uh, dollar stores are shutting down. And the article reads here. I haven't read this article on CNN. Nathaniel Meyerson writes, dollar stores are shutting down across America. They did this to themselves. That's ominous. Uh, 99 cents are going out of business. I shop at a, um, I shop at a Dollar King. There's a Dollar King near me. I don't go to the 99 cent stores, and maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe I'm part of the problem. But I do shop. I think I think there's an ego involved with all of us and why we don't shop more at like Dollar Kings and 99 cent stores. I'm not saying go get your, you know, your steaks there. I'm not saying go get, uh, you know, the finer ingredients for a gourmet meal. But, you know, if you need to... Get some cleaning products. You can go. You can go one of them superstores. I shop at the superstores. I try not to all the time, but I do. You can pay six bucks for a cleaner, or you can go to the dollar store and maybe pay a buck ten and get something called Clean Spray, and it's going to do the job. I guarantee you, you're not dying of any diseases. Uh, your food uh, is not uh, going rotten on some uh, unclean plates. Um, I don't know if that's possible. Now that I think about it, I don't. I don't. I don't think that's possible. Um, and I, th- I just think we overlook the dollar stores uh, because of, of, of what we view, you know, um, our, what are view, our view of the people who shop there. Troy's got a uh, dollar and a quarter tree by me. Good for buying cheap soap and kitchen stuff. Exactly. Like, do you want to go to a big box store and pay eight bucks for a pack of three, uh, uh, you know, three sponges to clean your dishes with, or, or do you want to go get the same thing that maybe they last a week or two shorter, get them at the dollar store. So um, if 99 cent store shut down, maybe it truly is on them. Maybe it truly is on them. I don't know. Uh, I don't know the reason. They have around 8,000 stores, mostly in cities. The train. Oh, see the tra- The chain has struggled since dollar tree bought it. In 2015. Wow. So maybe the dollar store that I go to is part of the problem. Wow. There you go. All right. I'll read this. See, it says Dollar Tree is mostly suburban and caters to middle income shoppers with party supplies and knickknacks. This is true. It acquired Family Dollar, which sells more basic foods and household essentials to grow their lower income customers in urban and rural areas. This all sounds like disaster. This sounds like some corporate uh, BS. Oh, look at these. Look, oh, and we got Family Dollar, Dollar Tree, Dollar General. How many of you have spent this much time thinking about uh, dollar stores? Probably not. There you go. Laserbolt has the answers. The last line says it all. Both brands were bought by other companies and faltered under their new owners. How many times have we seen that? Corporate acquisitions, changing what worked, bottom line, that can do it. Range Analysis Dollar Tree also bought, uh, brought billions in buying other dollar companies and merchants raised the prices, but it worked off the mistake. Yeah, so you guys are on this. You guys are on this. I, I this is the, the this is why I like my audience here on the live shows, and and the pre-tape shows. I'm just taking a swing through the ninety-nine cent store debacle. You're all you're all full of answers and reasons. You respect it. ZT Kisser thirteen. Says John Oliver did a good piece on dollar stores and their problems last year. Apparently, they treat their employees badly. You know, I, 
I'll say this: going to the dollar, uh, going to the Dollar Tree, uh, not a lot of joy behind the counter. I just assumed it just was because you know it's employment and people are, uh, you know, don't want to be employed. Not the. I'm not saying that in the. Uh, I'm not saying that in the no one wants to work anymore way. I'm just saying you know, I I, I wouldn't be too motivated to be a great Dollar Tree employee either. All right. Um, I'm trying to get a caller here. I've got something set up if we can get this caller in here. Uh, if you want to call into the show, there's some ways to do it. I'll reset that here. Uh, I want to thank uh, BC and Laserbolt for the Super Chats earlier tonight here. But, yeah, if you want to call in, uh, become a channel member. I put a post up every day and on Patreon at patreon.com. I put up a post as well with a uh, link uh, to call in. Audio only. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll do it. All right. I'm trying to... I'm, I'm not... This isn't count me as begging for calls. I, I was trying to set up a call with someone outside of the... Uh, outside of the, uh, the network here. All right. Uh, Lauren Romo's here. I'm going to challenge... Romo needs to call in. Lauren says, well, now i got to read the story. Maybe I don't need to be supporting my local dollar store. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. And that's the thing. When you dig into most of these companies, I don't care their sizes, unless it literally is the mom and pop down the street. But I don't know what the mom and pops are doing to their employees. I don't know if I can trust them either. Romo, you got to call in. I want to hear more about what gets you crying in Rudy. And who out there shares a birthday with a monster? I want to know. Were you born on April 20th? Let's talk about it. Uh, oh, I see. And, and by the way, if you're calling in, it's best to call in from Google. Mm. Oh, my God. We got one. ZT Kisser says, I was bored on 420, unfortunately. A day after me, but bored on Hitler's birthday. You know, that's the thing. All right. Laser Bolt says, also my birthday is tax day. Troy says he only cries at the end of baseball movies. I rewatched I re uh, Field of Dreams about two weeks. Uh, and I don't even, like I said, I've said before, I, I don't, that is not a baseball movie. It's much more than a baseball movie. Um, and, um, it got me again. It kind of gets me. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We got a call right here, right now. I'm going to get something ready here. Oh, I can't do that. I messed up again. All right. All right. We got a caller here right now and we've, we, we, we're, we're going to bring her in. Uh, and this could go anywhere. She could have a, you call in, by the way, you could have a question for me. But I think this person uh, coming to the show now is a, is a fr friend of the show. She's often in chat. Uh, her name is uh, Jennifer Miro. And Jen, how are you there? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can, Ken. Oh, you, God, you sound like a late night radio host giving love advice. <laughs> this is WKEN oh, taking man. requests. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Claudia Dolphson chat as well. All right, uh, all right uh, Jen. Now, we had talked earlier today. Yes. Do you have a question or do you want to, what do you, what, do you want to go to what we had planned on talking about? Well, I, um, I came in late. I apologize. I was eating a grilled cheese sandwich, um, and Ooh. forgot that this was happening because I had walked the dogs and, uh, it's went, okay. Oh crap. It's, it's okay. five thirty. I should, I'm missing Ken's show. So here I am. So I apologize. No, 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 there's no need to uh, uh, apologize. Uh, um, everyone should open the door, get on the floor, and walk the dogs or dinosaur. Uh, but um, first of all, I got to know this. Grilled cheese sandwich, do you put anything on it? Do you put a tomato? Do you put a ham slice? What do you do with it? No, I do lots of butter, sometimes mayonnaise on the uh, bread to fry it, then put the cheese in the middle. Um mm. So butter both sides and make sure you have a nice creamy tomato soup to dip it in. I love the I love it's a little hot today. I don't know if I would do that today, but but that's uh, uh, that's the way to do it. Yeah, that's, it is a little warm today for that. But uh, I'm kind of uh, I need to get to Whole Foods and get some more groceries. So bottom of the barrel here. 
yeah, yeah. I just was at the uh, the Trader Joe's, and and uh, we're I'm, I'm back in love with Trader uh, Trader Joe's. Uh, it took it took me a bit, but I'm back in. Uh, that parking situation I, is horrendous, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I live. You know how close I live to, and I just won't do it. But I do miss. They have one seasoning. I think I made it for you once, Ken, which was I mm. made you tots, and I made a sour cream onion dip, some kind of dip that you loved, and it was oh, with yeah. It was with the Trader Joe's, that onion salty thing, and I can't find anything close to it. So I think I'm going to have to go to Trader Joe's just for that damn seasoning. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah as you should. Yeah, as you should. Because uh, <laughs> that's how you'll get me to come hang out with you again. All right. Uh, all right. So uh, w- d- what, what is your question, Jen? Is, it, is your question tonight how to improve your dating bio? No, your question is how to improve my dating bio, even though I'm getting off all of the sites. But you, damn it, you won't let that go. You're like, all right, we're going to help you, Jen. And you know what? If I was back on the sites, I absolutely need the help because not great with the profile thing. Not great with the photos. You're not. You're not. Um, And you've got and this is this is where I messed up. I I have I have your Facebook page open, but um, I have not added the calls to the media layout page, which is hard to explain and make any sense online. So I can't share. I was going to share your costume photos, which sounds almost wrong of me to do. Maybe that's not right. Well, um, I mean, it's on Instagram, too. I mean, I have a it's on Instagram. stuff over the years. Yeah. Y- yeah. I, y- here's my, my thing was, and I and I'm no one's here to pressure you. Uh, maybe if Jeff May shows up in chat, he might pressure you. He's been here <laughs> earlier today. Um, but um, I, uh, I've seen your dating profile. I, yeah, you, now, did you delete them and deactivate them, or are you just not going to them? I deactivated Raya, uh, but I didn't delete it, so I, I probably could reactivate it. But Bumble and all that stuff, I, 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 yeah, I mean, I don't even know. I'm probably floating out there somewhere, but I, I deleted them. I think Raya was the only one I deactivated. Okay. Now, Rye is the one you have to get in. Uh, you have to get. You have to be invited in, right? Yeah, I don't even know how it is these days. Like, I, I was really early on. We're talking probably three or four years ago now, maybe even five. I don't even know. Probably at least four years ago, where you had to be invited, and it took weeks or months. And I don't know. It took me only three days, so I don't know. Some. It's like I think it's random. So I, I didn't have a huge problem, but now I don't know. It's kind of, it's probably kind of douchey. I don't know. I'll have to take a look. Okay. But so, so you are at a point and I don't, we don't need to get into the serious psychological side of it, but you were at a point where you were fine, not dating. Yeah. I mean, it's, I was like, I should probably do this. You know, I, uh, you know, you know, when it re- when it really dawned on me recently, when my back went out and I'm like, Oh, damn. <laughs> I'm going to die here alone if I don't have someone. Like, that's when it dawned on me. I love that that's what it took for me to go, oh, crap, I should probably have someone. You know, when my back goes out and I can't, like, move or walk, that's, so that's you, when you need someone. Yeah, you were fear, you're fiercely independent uh, until <laughs> you're near, on death's door. I think we're all yes. that way. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to, you know, have two chihuahuas that will slowly eat me over the course of three days once Ditto. I die. But but at least Ditto Grace will, too, will yes. yeah, 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 Grace will be around. She, yeah, she'll be around. And I, I think, I think, I, I you know, you, I, as you know, I'm an avid cook and I love, yeah. you know, cooking and I love making cocktails and watching TV shows. And so I, 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 I do miss sharing s- s- that kind of thing with someone. Basically, right. cooking cocktails and if my back goes out, I think yeah. that's, that's night, you know, that's, I, I don't, I, I, I'm not a very demanding person that way. I like someone who's independent and does their own thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, this is fair. So this is this is what you put on your profile. But I my I think my problem was uh, not my problem. But when you showed me your dating profiles in Anaheim in 2022, that's and right. I caught COVID that weekend. That was a you, Star Wars celebration. <laughs> yes, it was. It was yep. a celebration. It was a uh, celebration of COVID. Yep. For almost everyone but me. All right. That aside, though, I felt you downplayed yourself on your dating profiles. Really. I, I felt all your pictures were, and I'm not saying you need cheese puff, uh, you know, sexy boudoir photos. I'm just saying all your photos were of, were at a distance in sunglasses doing activities. <laughs> so I was too down to earth. Yeah, slightly. Like <laughs> I wanted one picture of you doing archery 
Um, and then the rest could be, you know, a little bit more. Lauren, now, Lauren Romo in, in chat agrees with you. She says it's more about survival than dating. I get it, Jen. She agrees with you. Yeah. She agrees with you. Yeah, um, especially in Los Angeles. So that's why, that's why I would say I don't want to – I'm not going to put you on the spot and say, you know, again – Go take some lingerie photos and put them on. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want anyone to do that. I'm just saying. Uh, Pick better photos is what you're saying. It's Pick not even photos. the photos. The vibe is a hangout. Ah. And 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 maybe you know maybe it's you put a picture of you cooking a grilled cheese. By the way, Brian <laughs> Tiller wants to know what kind of pan you use: cast iron, stainless. I use stainless. It, it does really stick, so it's kind of a pain in the butt. But the Bread sometimes sticks to the pan, and then you add more butter and scrape it, and then you have all these crispy pieces. So it's you. kind of uh, it's kind of a you know a little bonus. Yeah. God bless you. That is that is wonderful. <laughs> that is absolutely wonderful. All right, so I you know I, you know I, I I'm not putting pressure on you, but if 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 you decide to go, what will make you decide to go back on the dating apps? Uh, if there's a, if there's a new app, that's awesome and is intuitive and works and is cool. And, and I don't have a ton of ugly, ugly men contacting me. I think that was the problem. <laughs> Bumble. I was like, holy crap. I must be the ugliest woman in the world because these people were like 65 and bald. And, uh, <laughs> and like, I was like, oh my God. Like I didn't have, it wasn't even remotely decent looking. And it's not all about looks, but I mean, this was like, like cartoon yeah. level jokey. Okay, but what? But so that was on Bumble. What? Okay, what was? What was? Even though none of them actually worked out for you in the end, or at least right now, what do you feel was the best dating app? Hinge, I, uh, Raya Bumble. was the closest. Raya was Raya. the closest because you you did have to be invited on. You were vetted. You had to have an Instagram account that worked. You had to have certain criteria. And so yeah. that was kind of nice. And there was a lot of industry people, which was good. But it, I think I, 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 I did one phone call with someone and they talked about themselves nonstop. So I was like, you know what? I know exactly what this is. I'm going to sit and I'm going to be, I'm going to Barbara Walters this <laughs> shit and I'm going to ask questions. And he had a fabulous Barbara, time because I was asking questions about him and it was wonderful. And I was like, okay, that's the end of that chapter, which was fine. <laughs> I just, you know, when you want to get it over with, it's like, okay, well, this isn't working out. You know? Okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. All right, so so I, we're, we're not, you know, uh, Jeff Mays in chat, he, he says, you're not the ugliest woman in the world. You're an absolute smoke show. Laura Romo says the re relate, uh, relatability of all this with a, a crying, smiling, laughing face. <laughs> um, it's just, look, I wish I wish I knew more upstanding young men who could be suitors for you. Yeah. Um, what's what's it? you're failing, Ken? I'm failing. This is on me. <laughs> oh, most, on you. you know, most of the people I know are. It's not even that they're in relationships. It's that um, I don't know as many people as you used to. And the ones I do know are comics. I've I've told you be wary of comics. It doesn't mean comics can't be good. I mean, I'm glad. Well, I'm a sucker for comics. That's the problem. If funny mm. people. Oh my god, funny in the industry. But yeah, we're I've always had a soft spot. So that's we're, yeah. But we're troubled, and and you you've yes. you even learned you even with being a friend to me, you've learned <laughs> that we we as comics are fueled by hate and loathing, and complaining. Like this is that that's the fuel we run on, and we think it's fun and games, but it can drive other people insane. Um, and and yeah, as but Jeff I have May, a high tolerance. You do. I do. Jeff Jeff May, who is a comic and a great one, says comedians are, it turns out, garbage. And and Aww. that that might be my worry. Is if I and if I was in my old industry, the the public safety industry, I wouldn't want you dating a cop or a security right. director. Um, you know what? You know what you could do if you know okay. a good comedian. You can you can give me that. You can give me the opportunity to say no. But I'm telling you, every time That's I'm fair. interested in every time I'm interested in someone, they're not interested in me. And there, there are okay. guys that are interested in me, and I'm just like, oh God, no, no. And so it, it was one of those things. The universe is like, screw you, get on the horse you rode in on. They're 65 and and bald, as you say, and you know. Or or even 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 in my range, it's just that we're more friends than anything else, and so it's like uh, they, it's just not. Yeah, what? it's just never worked out. What it, it, this is the, don't let's not turn this into a tragedy. 
Um, <laughs> what is the one thing? And people are agreeing with you. Trey T, uh, my friend Trey T, says I'm kind of kind of glad I was pre-dating at material. He's been locked up and married in Portland for years now. Um, Laserbolt says I couldn't imagine dating now with everyone talking shit on Facebook. Et cetera. Yeah, yeah, that that's an issue too. Right. Um, but it's hard. It's hard. But the reality is, for a, a a working woman like you, which makes it sound like you're in a different industry than the one you are. I apologize for that. Uh, a working <laughs> woman like you are, uh, you know, you don't. You're not out there meeting people, and, and that's the thing too. Yeah. I don't think there. It's it's hard to meet people. It is. I don't go out enough. I I do love my dogs, and I love being here with them. And I have a fabulous house in Toluca Lake. Although you know that that brings me to a point. I have a fabulous house in Toluca Lake. Yeah. I, I have my own money. I do well for myself. I've got fabulous right. dogs. I cook like a fiend. Yeah. I, I still look okay. You'd think this would be uh, a. <laughs> you think this would be a, a catch, but. Uh, I think, and I'm not going to dox you by giving your address away, but uh, uh, <laughs> I I think. Uh, it's not even that it's intimidating. I think you should have your standards high, and there's a lot to lose if it goes wrong. So I understand if you're trepidatious. Well, it's, it's you know, I, 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 but you do make a good point, which is I don't get out enough because I do love hanging out here and doing my thing. But I am a writer, and so we're – I was I – was, in a, the past two years, I was like nonstop. I, I can't tell you how many things I've canceled. Um, yes. Well, over, okay. Over, yeah. When are we going to have um, – I'm not doing anything big for my birthday. Uh, when are we going to have like a, 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 an afternoon in Jen Murrow's backyard, which again, when you say it just like that, you could take it the wrong way. But uh, when are we going to have a, a, a co-hosted party in your backyard? We'll set it, do it night, nice. We can put up some uh, uh, croquet. I don't know. I and think then we that's can, a great idea. Yeah, we can invite some. Uh, uh, we can in, invite some uh, uh, eligible bachelors over. I'll host your birthday party here, and we'll do archery. Okay. Love that. Uh, May says Miro is an absolute catch. I think you should put that. Oh. If you put on your dating, re- if you start up a dating <laughs> ra- app again, you, the Thank quotes you. from your friends should be what should be your data, dating profile. You know what? I do love that. That's actually really funny. I never thought of that. That's <laughs> Jeff that's May good. says. Jen Miro Jeff is May. an absolute catch. Ken Nav Com- talks in. Yeah. <laughs> Comedian, not garbage, Jeff May says. <laughs> All right. I have one super chat. It's it's not directly for you, but I'm going to read this here, Jen, because uh, it's someone who uh, may have. All right. It says, JMB, who is hanging out in uh, Japan, I believe, right now, says, it blows my mind that Jen and I were probably at the same university about the same time. I just want to let her know that I uh, lived in uh, Shiho, Shiho, but C-H-E-Y, from 92 to 93, go Buffs. Does that, does that relate to you? I mean, 92, 93, no, I, I don't know what the go Buffs is. I don't know. Okay. Maybe, maybe he thinks I'm a different gen? Maybe, maybe. Am I forgetting something? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. no. All right, let me see. Hang on the line here, Jen, for one second. I was going to let you go. Uh, caller number two, or, can you hear me? I sure can. Oh, cool. Great. All right, this might work. Now, uh, Can you hear Jen? Jen, can I hear you? Uh, can you hear me? I sure can. I sure can oh. hear you both. That is, what a great way to establish a wonderful connection across the <laughs> Internet, across the cosmos of the Internet. Oh my All right, so Jeff called in last week. We had a great call, but Jeff, you're here on the phone now. You got Jen Muro here, who's who's you know I I don't want to encourage her to start up a Raya profile again, but do you have any thoughts on this situation? Here's what I will say: um, Jen and I have been really close for a very long time. She introduced me to Ken Napsok, one of my yeah. very good friends. Yeah. Um, we went to my former place of employment once in costume. As X-Men, I was Wolverine, she was Psylocke. I might as well have been invisible (laughs) while I was there. I posted a photo and everyone is like, didn't even know I was in the picture because I was with her. Like everybody's like, that is the hottest woman I've ever seen. Oh, that is very kind. You- so now, I mean, I didn't say it. They did. I felt really <laughs> left out. What are you talking No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you are. You're a fucking smoke show. I mean, oh, holy thank smokes. You, darling. <laughs> well, that was a few years ago, you know, time and uh, c- c- pandemics and no, exhaustion. No, nah. nah, we, spent, nah. we spent two and a half years indoors. So we're fine. <laughs> we're fine. Uh, we're fine. 
Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I feel you, Jeff. Do you feel that contributes to any intimidation by us, the uh, weaker, more insecure sex? Or wh- so what do you feel? I, that I do understand. Like, I don't understand confident men, but that's just my own thing like i don't really necessarily understand uh men that are just like i think i could get her kind of a thing so it is i mean any but also at the same point like any man who's genuinely intimidated by like a sexy successful genius with her (laughs) all of her shit together like anybody that would be like intimidated or be like no thanks is just embarrassing (laughs) <laughs> yeah on on them yeah i agree with that i agree I'm with that i'm wondering if it's our it's just my age group and that most people are married or, or with someone i think i think that is actually a lot of it to be honest do do you feel do you worry that you know you don't want to be a stepmom you don't want to divorce or divorcee oh, no, or whatever you, you, you're that. you're okay with that okay I'm the opposite i actually want a family that's out here that i can be a part of mm. their family mm. because my family's back east and i love them it's just I don't get back that often. So I'm saying for the smaller holidays, for the smaller weekend stuff, no, th- them having kids is actually fantastic. Or at okay. least their family in this state or near got, here somewhere. I have, hit it, Jeff. I have hit an it, idea. Jeff. Yeah. I have an idea for you, Jen. Stop me if you've heard this one. <laughs> we're going to shift away from writing television and we're going to become a live in nanny. And what you're going to do is you're going to gradually but slowly break apart the husband and wife, and then you can silence as many lambs as you want, uh, wow. and then sort of create. Uh, you can become that wife. You can become so, that mother, and you I might, can, you know. <laughs> I haven't seen the end of the movie, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty. I can be hot. a Maria von Trapp. I guess I can go more of a nice it works direction. Out. You know, I can. You I know, like have I play. mean, the nun costume could work. I like yeah, this. Part. I mean, you know, I can, hello, children. Hi, I'm a little, little lonely goat. And then I'll just, you know, go up the stairs and I'll make things out Hell. of, you know, um, you know, costume, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just rip curtains down and, and, and sew things yeah. up and it'll just be fabulous. You hit all the notes in that song, too. That's, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah. I like this play. Yeah. The hills are alive with the sound of an East Coast Italian girl singing. Yeah, thank God I don't have that accent anymore. Can you imagine? No, and then I start sounding like this. Yeah, yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's I the mean, problem. Yeah. I mean, it seems like Raya would be the best thing for you, Jen, in that regard. Mm-hmm. Uh, primarily because it feels like the ugly dude percentage would be a little bit lower. <laughs> yes, although Look. you should see the girls on Raya. They are talk about smoke shows. They're like, and also. I'm way older than a lot of these girls. And a lot of the guys who are my age want women 10 years younger. Yeah, but not every guy. Like, I don't like women that are 10 years younger than me. Like, I think a lot of, uh, there's a lot of dudes out here that do like age-appropriate women. Thank God. If you know them, send them my way because. (laughs) uh, But Raya is uh, definitely, there's, I think it's that kind of guy. I think, by the way, I think they're probably in there somewhere on Raya. It's just that. You have to like dig through, and there's yeah. a lot of yeah, yeah. Jen, you, Jen has the look of like the third wife of a Greek shipping magnet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's you know, so like specific. someone like, named Aristotle. Yeah, yeah, or like, or like, you know, Hermoncules or something like that. And, <laughs> and you're just like, look, I, we just call him Herm. Yeah, yeah, I like you know, this. I, it's a. Uh, you know, I know you, and it's so funny because the last time we talked about this, I think it was you, Jeff, and Ken at Star Wars Celebration, and I think that's what we were looking at. We were looking at Mariah. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. You, wasn't Jeff there? Well, um, Joseph we, Scrimshaw was there. I don't know if Jeff was there. Oh, yes, Joseph Scrimshaw was there. That might have. We also might have been doing that at the uh, pizza backyard pizza party yes. that we had, where it was just me, Ken, and Jen. That's right. what a party. That was a party. See, I that gotta was. stop. I gotta stop inviting you guys, and I gotta start inviting like. Other yeah. mm, I'm gonna do a hard disagree on you <laughs> stopping inviting us from cooking us yes. pizza in your backyard okay. pizza oven. You know yeah. what? I'm actually fair. gonna say you need to invite us more to do yeah. that. It's been a, it's been too long. Yeah, I it's need to practice my pizzas. That's that's fair. J- j- practice practice your pizzas sounds like another thing. Maybe we. Shouldn't take out of context. Um, Jeff, be, be, before we, we wrap, I don't, I don't want to put Jen under the gun here too much here, grill her too much, but would you agree with me from having seen her dating profile in the past that she downplays, I'm not talking about just physical hotness. She downplays herself 
with a a profile and profile pictures that are like, hey, I, I'll meet you at a park for a picnic, but 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 the flashy lights and the great the city, the nights out, that's not me. Do, do, do you feel that hurts there at all? Am I wrong on this? I, I, I think we have a generational problem where, and especially East Coast people like the three of us are, where we were taught this weird form of humility and then we were thrust into a town where that is actually frowned upon to be humble. Um, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I will say that Jen, I mean... We all know what Jen looks like. All of us on the conversation. Jen, just show everyone how fucking hot you are. Jesus. Well, yeah, I don't guess overthink I could try. it. I could try to go on again. I, I can all right. see what happens. Okay, then here's the deal. You, the next time you go, when you get back on there, you have to come back on the show. And we will uh, we will analyze and edit your profile as needed. Would you well, agree well, to that? You're not, very... to sh- you're not allowed to show it on screen, so I'll have to show you the photos I, I ha- have chosen for it. Because, Ron, yeah. you're, you're not allowed to take video or Just whatever it is. Go back through your Instagram and find all the photos of yours that I've commented on. And that's probably a good way to go. Great. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. Yeah, you know what, Ken? I think you might have to... You okay. guys have to come over. We'll make a pizza okay. and you can pick we'll do it. Us. I love this. I love Great. this. Uh, thank you, Done Jen. Right uh, I'll let you go. Uh, appreciate you, you calling in. Appreciate your support. Uh, more to come. More to come, indeed. Always good to talk to you, babe. All right, uh, Jeff. Uh, any any question here? I'll let you go. If you got something to do with your life, I don't want to have to make you an unpaid guest every week. But uh, appreciate uh, Ken, you being here. Ken, I adore being here. This is the Ken Napzok show, not the Ken and Jeff show. So I am going to let you go so you can get back to it. Um, but you are an absolute delight. I would have come on sooner, but I, uh, my comedy softball friends came over and dropped off some gear because I am now the steward of the gear for this week's game. Um, so, so I, I, I was away from, I was AFK, uh, for mm. a little bit, so I'm sorry I didn't show up on time, but, uh, everybody, okay. what I, what I will say, and I say this all the time, and I'm sure everybody here has understood this, but if you, uh, if you, you might not be on Patreon, you might not be a subscriber to the special YouTube channel things. And that is awesome. We, we creators always appreciate when you guys watch our stuff, do Ken a favor like this, comment on it after the fact, share it with other people. If you know, tell people who you like there, just do the free stuff, review, review his podcasts, all the free stuff will always help the favorite creators that you like, even if you're not in a place to financially support them. You, there are ways you can do it for free. Uh, and we're starving. We're dying out here. And our <laughs> Patreon, shr- I don't know, Ken, if you, I don't know if yours did the thing, my Patreon shrank like yes. 80 bucks last month. Because yes. of all the all the people that are like, I'm just my food is more expensive. Like, yeah, which I get. Uh, my totally, Patreon, totally yeah, get my, it. My Patreon uh, dropped significantly uh, at the beginning of April. Um, which again, we totally get it. But to what just point? We appreciate it. The likes, the sharing, uh, the participating. It really does help. So, I agree yeah. with you there, on Jeff. On that and one. if you guys want to watch me open packs of trading cards uh, on camera do or do whatever, head on over to my uh, YouTube. It's at Hey There Jeffro, just like all of my social media, H-E-Y-T-H-E-R-E-J-E-F-F-R-O. I open lots of sports and non-sports cards on camera, mostly non-sports. Ken, I need you to come and do a break with me. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Uh, I'm excited to do it. Um, my ASMR channel uh, is going strong, but uh, I need it to grow. But uh, I want to get into the pack breaking community. Instead of the pack cutting with scissors community that you were a part of at one point? I mean, I'm still there. People Are you like still it. doing the ASMR? It's the ASMR channel. Yeah. So it, it's weird because I attract card break fans who halfway through are like, what the hell am I watching? But they stick around, so it's a weird mix. So I'm trying to explain it up top better. Like, this is an ASMR channel that uses sports cards. But I'm also, so I'm, I'm trying to do some episodes that are more sports, sports card heavy and others that are more ASMR trigger heavy. I'm trying to meet well, people Ken, in the middle. Ken, are there, if there's anything, like if you want to open a box of Star Wars Unlimited or if you want to open a box of, like, you know, Top's finest Star Wars. We don't even have to open Star Wars stuff. I'll have you over. We'll do an I Must Break You, which is the name of my yeah. show. 
Uh, we'll do an I Must Break You. You and I will open cards, and then I mail those out to my patrons, and everybody's happy. Love it. I want to do it. We're going to do that uh, very soon. Let's do it, buddy. Let's do it. All right. Hey, everybody, thank you for watching and supporting my friend Ken. It means a lot to me that you guys are there. Don't forget to do all the free stuff that you can and let him know that you are a supporter. I appreciate it, Jeff. Thank you, son. Right. Thank you, son. No I said son. Thank like you, you're, like, <laughs> like you're, you're my dad. Uh, they were dead. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Jeff May, everybody, one of my favorites. He's doing it out there. Uh, I want to acknowledge the super chat from JMB. Uh, happy early birthday to Ken. And any Napsters making this happen, whose birthdays are coming out. Yeah, I don't know if Napsters is going to work. About 15 minutes uh, Fifteen minutes left in the show. You know I have to stop because I'm saying things like minutes and calling Jeff my son. Um, and that might be because of my 16 years Zyra. Oh, I forgot that when Jen Murrow was on, I forgot to ask Jen if she was the one that got me this 16-year age Zaya rum. Because I can only imagine successful friends of mine got this. Not that all my friends aren't successful in their own ways. But someone who's the success shows in, in, in other ways. Uh, maybe. All right. All right. Uh, we have uh, got some great questions. Oh, yeah. Jim Rose says, I think I did. Yeah. See, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Laserbolt says, I love Ken's ASMR videos uh, because he sim simply talks calm and quiet. doesn't whisper. He talks low and smoothly. Whispers make my skin crawl. Yeah, I don't love all the whispers. I'm with you, Jeff. I don't love all the whispers. A lot of my favorite ASMR channels don't do the whisper thing. Uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't work there. All right. Uh, Scott Mills watching live on Facebook. Says, I made it again. Live. Woohoo. Uh, Jamie Johnson has a question here. Uh, how do you balance your faith if what you're watching goes against your faith? That is a tough question for me to answer um, because I, I uh, my faith has changed a lot over the last few years. Um, I still will identify as a God-fearing Christian man, but I am very much at war with the church. And part of the reason I'm at war with the church is my upbringing. Um, I was taught to stand against the culture of the time. Uh, and so much of it was uh, uh, demonized. Uh, it was part of the 80s satanic panic. And I think uh, getting past all that and looking at truly what that was, it was uh, definitely to me a form of repression, at times a form of uh, um, uh, sexism, a form of racism. It was, it, was, it was complicated stuff. And so therefore, I was always at odds. I was getting in trouble for watching TV shows or movies, including Star Wars. My pastor... The lead pastor of my church in the early 80s actually gave a sermon that I was in, in, in attendance for. Actually, it was probably more the mid-80s. Um, I was closer to 10, where he showed a picture of Darth Vader and, and, and talked about how this represented uh, the love of evil was so prevalent in pop culture and this and that. And, and um, I've, I, yeah, I, I look back, I don't, I don't have that issue. Now, there's things I don't enjoy watching. Um, there's things maybe I don't enjoy glorifying. But I don't feel ever at odds with my faith. I feel my faith goes beyond uh, that. It, 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 it is, and it, like I said, uh, I am mostly nowadays at war with the church. I think the church has destroyed uh, Christianity. I think it continues to destroy Christianity. I think the participation in culture wars is destroying uh, Christianity. There is a pastor I like named Zach Lambert who is on um, social media. You should give him a, fo a follow. He runs a church in, in Austin, Texas, I believe. He is spectacular. Um, he, is, he is doing such a good job talking and trying to address the ex-evangelical uh, situation. Uh, 40 million people leaving their faith and leaving their church. And I, and I don't think that needs to be the case, right? I don't think it needs to be the case. I think that's the tragedy to me. Uh, Jeff May is adding, says, um, if your religion can't distinguish fiction from spiritual beliefs, you might need to take a, uh, make a shift in one of those. Yeah, yeah, and, that, and that's kind of my thought. And, and the truth is, like, Star Wars was almost canceled in my house. Um, Star Wars was almost canceled in my house because um, it, it, it promoted what was called Eastern religion, which is... Is, is, is inherently racist, I think, in its view, but it's also this, it, it, it positions Western religions as the right religions. And I have some thoughts on God, Jesus, the son of God, that might make it stand out from other religions, blah, 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 but I didn't even know, you know, but I'm, I'm hedging a bet that I can't tell. So 
but Star Wars, as I have, as I've gotten older, as I've spent more time studying, uh, Star Wars puts more out into the world that is more in line with I think are the core tenets of Christianity than I think um, of most of the uh, the members of the church. And I mean, church is a capital C to me. That's where I'm at. So yeah, I, I don't ha- I don't struggle with it. I don't struggle with it. Um, I had a lot of guilt growing up. I, I, that's the joke. The joke, uh, you know, um, the fact that I haven't seen Top Gun, the fact that I haven't seen uh, Gremlins, that I only saw Ghostbusters in, in 2016, is it comes from that. It comes from that, uh, uh, where I was um, not allowed to watch those films because of what they supposedly uh, put out there. And, and, and it's, uh, the Ghostbusters one is hilarious because now you look back and watch Ghostbusters and it is... A, a Reagan era, <laughs> small government, uh, the EPA is the enemy, uh, gentrification is the way to go, the government can't handle it. It is, it is everything that I think you, you, you might get from the Republican Party these days. Uh, Jamie says, thanks for the answer. If it's okay, I'll keep you and your friends in my prayers. Yeah, absolutely. I, that's, that's, and I, this is an argument I've had with my folks, and, and I'm not saying I'm arguing with Jamie. Um, it's a misunderstanding I've had with my folks. I haven't left what I believe in my heart. I still say my prayers. I still try to be uh, the best of what I feel I can be in those in that arena. Um, I just feel that there's been more destruction uh, from that side than they'd have you believe. And, and a lot of that for me was getting to a bigger city, right? A lot of that was getting to a bigger city where hanging around with a gay person um, was something I actually did here, where in, in my hometown they were closeted in the 80s and, and 90s growing up. Um, being a friend and working with a transgender person just helps you see the situation a little bit differently. And, I, and I'm not saying that you, you have to all move out of small towns or that the, the church, but I, I just, you know, I would love, I would love a situation where uh, uh, it was easier for a, it would be easier for a, a transgender uh, person to, to find a home in a church. That's what I'd love to get to. That's where I'd love for us to get to society. And I follow, uh, you know, I follow pastors on, um, on social media uh, uh, who, who are fighting for that. There's also a great YouTube channel. There's also a great YouTube channel uh, by a guy named Pat Conkey, um, um, who is uh, still a, I describe him as conservative. I mean, he's definitely a conservative Christian. He was a former he, a, a pastor, worked in ministry, was big in the uh, pro-life movement. All of a sudden, he's got all that stuff that I might, might agree, disagree with him on policy and that kind of stuff. He's got a great YouTube channel. His name is Pat Conkey. K A H K A H N K, and he is out there fighting Trump with his YouTube channel. He is out there doing it by addressing those in the church and saying, "This man does not align with what you are or what you want to be." And there's other options, and there's a permission so a permission structure of of of. Of going against that. And he's, again, he's someone who would probably still vote for, he'd probably vote for Mike Pence, which I don't agree with. But, but his thought is we, you've got to, the permission structure to move away from these kind of things and be what we want to be, be what we at times claim to be is, is important. And it's fascinating to get it because he does it in such a wonderful, peaceful, warm, loving way. He's a man of God, a man of God who I'd like to break bread with. And, 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 and align with on a fight against Trump and those like that. Well, we went down a path there. Uh, Scott Mills says, uh, very young in my life, I was learning to play drums. I was in church band. I got called in the pastor's office. It was my uncle and told me he could feel a different spirit on my plan. And looking back, it was very apparent. The evil spirit he was sensing was practicing and learning my own craft. So it was a scar left on me this day. How do they squash drive and creativity? Yeah. There's a lot of that kind of stuff. And, I, and, I, and, I, but I, and I'll, I'll always give a pastor a benefit of the doubt. I'll always give a church a benefit of the doubt. I just think time and time again it's, it's, it's been stamped, stamped on. Um, and and that's, that's the issue I have. I was the head writer of my uh, – before I moved to L.A., I was the head writer of my church's drama department. Uh, we used to write sketches and stuff. Uh, loved the pastor, the pastor of that church I went to uh, in Pismo Beach, California. He eventually passed away. Loved him. So I, I am not, I'm not at war with the individuals. I am at war with the uh, organization and tax the hell out of them, by the way. 
tax the hell out of them. Uh, Jeff May says, uh, I studied and taught about religion and beliefs. And man, it was a minefield in public schools. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm old enough. I am old enough to remember the golden rule up in a classroom. We get up every day, first, second grade, uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, and then uh, the golden rule will be up there. And I don't have a problem with the Pledge, 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 pledge of Allegiance. I, I just don't know. I don't think it should be in a school. But I'm not like Jeff May. I wasn't a teacher in a school. So there you go. There you go. I love getting serious. I love getting silly. Last week we got serious, and then I ate a bunch of peeps. I was sick from that, by the way. That didn't go well for me. I was, I was, I felt a little bad. Um, <laughs> Scott Mills said, to be fair, my uncle thought Chuck Smith was lukewarm. So there's that. Pastor Chuck Smith is the one who dedicated me as a baby. Uh, I was dedicated as a baby uh, before the eyes of the Lord um, by Chuck Smith, a uh, famous uh, pastor. Uh, and uh, yeah, for the most part, good. he was part of the Jesus movement. My parents emerged from the Jesus movement. Um, that was uh, um, where a lot of the uh, hippies uh, and those who were lost in the late 60s, a lot of counterculture folks, um, found uh, Jesus. And uh, they would live in like communes or they call them like houses. My parents were in one called the Philadelphia House. That's where they met. My dad got out of the Navy. He was a recovering, um, I don't want to say drug addict, but that's too extreme, but he had done, uh, he was he was his ship's drug dealer and kind of bottomed out. And and the church saved him, like, right? That's I, that's, I give that, that's all the credit there. I'm here because of that. Um, so no problem with that. But Chuck Smith was part of that whole situation. Uh, Calvary, uh, Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, started in a tent. <laughs> started with a tent. Uh, a lot of people are upset about the peeps thing. Uh, peeps, why? Why? Uh, you know what? I'll tell you why. Um, uh, I enjoyed them. Uh, but I'll say this. I used to enjoy them. I had this conversation with uh, my uh, buddy Ken Plume. Um, I, I, um, I have discovered that a lot of like the sugary treats, not counting the rum I'm having right now, but a lot of the sugary treats that I love... Reese's Cups or Twix, marshmallows, Peeps, jelly beans. If I have too many of them, sorry, I almost went to a bad Trump impersonation there. Jelly beans. Uh, I, I don't enjoy the sweets as much, which is crazy because I'm such a sweets guy. In Boston, we had the Dunkin' Donuts next to our hotel. Went there every morning, including the day we flew out. I had four Boston cream donuts and one blueberry glazed, and they were good. They were good, but by the end of the final trip, I, I had a Boston cream. We were in the car. We were in the rental car. We are heading back to the airport. Put that Boston cream down my gullet, and uh, man, <laughs> I did, almost didn't make it to the airport. My body rejected that. Uh, so I'm finding uh, you, I might be agreeing with you. Uh, Jared's here. Jared says, any song requests for my cover band gig tomorrow? That's a great question. I think, um, I think your cover band should, uh, you know, I'm always going to say, yeah, put on some Oasis or something like that, but I think we can move beyond that. I think, I think, you know, I'd like to see you do, um, Space Hog in the meantime. <laughs> That's what I want. Space Hog in the, me in the meantime. Sing Christmas shows. Chris, Jeff May wants to sing Christmas songs. Uh, 80s, 90s, uh, 2000 songs. Sing Christmas shoes. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Uh, how about this? Bob Mould, See a Little Light, 1989. Jared, that's the one I want. I'm officially requested that. See a little light. I know you will. Uh, do that. Bob Mould. Of, of uh, Husker Du and Sugar. Um, he had a great band in the 90s, Sugar. G Angel, great song. Uh, but 1989, so um, see a little light. Beautiful song. We're almost out of here. 
Uh, don't do Christmas shoes or shows or songs, says the audience. Uh, we're almost out of here. I want to thank you. Uh, thank to, thanks to Jed Murrow. Thanks to Brennan Marr. Thanks to Jeff May. Call in. I want you to call in. This show uh, is uh, it is an AM radio show from the past for a modern age, which means calls, your questions. Great question from Jamie tonight. Deep question about faith and faith uh, and, 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 and pop culture and faith. Love that stuff. Um, oh, look at that. Scott Mills says, oh, who drummed, opened for Bob Mould up here in Duluth. Minnesota, nicest guy ever. Wrote for WCW, too, in 1999 range. A uh, fascinating guy. Fascinating guy. Love that. Great story, Scott. Pound those skins, man. Pound those skins. Um, I want you all to call in. Become a channel member, Patreon supporter. Uh, call in. Uh, one day I might open up the phone lines to the general public. Uh, you know, we don't have to see any faces, so no uh, accidental wing wangs are going to pop up on the, on the screen here. Um, but uh, I like giving, it, uh, giving that phone line to those who support me directly as a reward for hanging out with this dumbass here. Uh, I appreciate it there. Troy says, I used to love Boston Cream Donuts, but not the filling. It's too damn sweet now. It's either coffee roll or old-fashioned for me. I have to downgrade. I got I got, um, I got to be honest. I got a little greedy. I like cream-filled donuts. Giggity. And uh, I, I got a little 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 donut hubris. Little and the second day we went there, I got two donuts, a Boston cream and that blueberry glazed. Stupid. It was stupid. Uh, and then I learned I learned uh, you can't I, the first day, Thursday morning, walk in confidently. It is raining sideways, hail's coming down, and it was it was snowing a little bit as well. I walk into the Dunkin' Donuts, said, uh, extra large coffee. And he just, the, guy, the manager kind of stared at me, and I thought I had done something wrong. It turns out I did. I was like, uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's what I'll have. He was like, mm-hmm. And he wasn't happy about it. Maybe you could tell by my California accent. He was like, and? I was like, and uh, coffee and a Boston cream donut. Okay. And we had this eye contact for a bit, and finally he goes, Black coffee, or and I was like, "Oh, sure, black coffee." Because the corner, I could see like a little stand with sugar and stuff. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, black, black coffee, black coffee's fine." Uh, and then I found out, no, they don't give you the cream on the side, only the sugar. So I, had a, I despise black coffee. So I, had, I had to suck it up. I couldn't. Go, I was not going to go back and be like, "Oh, I'm a dumbass." Could you give me some cream? I just poured like six things of sugar into that coffee, an extra large, and uh, went on with my day. But when I went back, I learned how to order it right. All right. We did it. We did our show. Uh, we'll be back next week. Birthday show. Birthday show. Next week. Next week. Uh, on the 18th, Thursday night. My birthday's the 19th. Come back for the big birthday show. I'll try to arrange some special call-in guests. We'll have some fun. Thank you to Laser Bolt for an early birthday gift. And my friend BC at the Grind Calls. Thank you to Jen Murrow and Jeff May and Brennan Marr for calling into the show. A lot of fun. We'll see you soon. Bye.